Good day, Knight and O. Welcome again to Devotionals, Brief Devotions for Busy People. I'm Michael Knight, and we're going to continue this Sermon on the Mount as we turn to chapter 6. So let's just read chapter 6 together. Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For when, for then, you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. Now, if you're like me, I've heard the left hand know and the right hand do applied to all kinds of situations as I was growing up. People just kind of throw that around loosely. And uh, if you guys are, maybe you can think of like, don't let your, can you rub and tap at the same time, right? Like left hand, right hand doing two different things. You can, you know, think of it literally in that regard. But as we think about where did we come from, chapter 5, we Jesus breaks down, right? This is all one sermon. So Jesus is going to break down, right? Living a righteous life. So as we turn to chapter 6, we're going to see, we're going to start with the giving. We're going to see the prayer. We're going to see the fasting. So he's going to focus kind of on these three things um, and talk about how that relates in terms of righteous living. But one of the things to notice um, is that he, it makes it very clear that you're going to be practicing righteousness before other people. But that's why you have to be wary of how you do so. But also, when it comes to this giving, he doesn't say if or any type of conditional thing that, that makes a sense of whether you can or cannot give, but it's very clear when you give to the needy. And so it's very clearly that God expects giving. Uh, and so what, what's very clear then is that there's a, like most of the Sermon on the Mount, and most of Christian living is, is the heart behind the giving. And so as we think about some biblical examples, we have some bad examples of giving, right? You can think about Acts 4 with Ananias and Sapphira, right? They gave from a, a place to, to maybe fit in or to, to be known that they had given, but then they secretly withheld some of the things. Uh, and so they were told, you know, was it not yours before you gave it to the Lord? So there was clearly a bad sign of a heart giving there. And then in Matthew 12, 41, you see this, as Jesus observes, right before the widow is going to give, he observes these rich people and these Pharisees just throwing in loud, game, you know, loud sounds of coins as they are being seen by everyone giving. But yeah, so in the good examples, like we just talked about, just after that in 12, 42 to 44, we see the widow give her last coins that she has. And so, obviously, that's, uh, and Jesus takes notes of that and shows that to the disciples. And then further on in this chapter, we're going to see about storing up treasures in heaven, right? And, and, and also, in, in correlation to the story of Ananias and Fire, we see that in chapter 4 of Acts, that the believers are participating with giving. And it's a heart of giving to the poor, to give to the needy, to give to the widows. And so, there's clearly a biblical precedent here to have a heart of giving. And so, as we see this, we see that giving is not optional, but it must come from a heart seeking God and His kingdom, um, rather than men and their recognition, or we give to glorify ourselves, but rather our desire to give should come from a place to be participating in the kingdom, to bring glory unto God by our gifts. And so as we go out there, we need not to give from a place to be seen. Even though someone may know you give, the heart behind it is, did you do it for sinful motives? Did you do it with a heart to be seen that's different than what's truly inside? And so I challenge you, ninth and know this week, to really focus on the heart. As we go through the Sermon on the Mount, remind ourselves, Let's have a heart like Jesus. Let's have a heart that pursues the things of God. Thanks, Nathan O.